Hi, I'm Glenn Rogers. This is Biblical Insights. In this video, we're going to talk about the question, is Christianity oppressive? Maybe it would be better to say we're going to answer the charge that Christianity is oppressive. The simple answer, the short answer is, yeah, no, it's not. Christianity is not in any way, shape, or form oppressive. But why would some people say it is? What is it that they see in Christianity or hear about Christianity <clears throat> that makes them think it is in some way oppressive to people? I mean, when you think about it, what Christianity is, is a religion, a system of belief that offers salvation from sin and a relationship with God. So why would anybody suggest that that's in any way oppressive? I mean, the gospel is good news. It's, it's the message that you're not stuck with the life you have. Your past doesn't have to haunt you bad or wrong things that you've done can be forgiven and taken away. It can be like, you know, they never happened and you can enjoy a relationship with God and move forward with your life. How, how can that message, which is good, possibly be interpreted as oppressive in any way? Well, there is a way, I guess, depending on your point of view, and, and so let's ask the question and think about why would some people think uh, that Christianity is oppressive? And the first thing I, I suspect that they would come up with is referencing somehow all of the different rules that are associated with Christianity. Someone might say there's just there's all kinds of rules. So you get a rule against this and a rule against that. You can't do all sorts of things that you want to do or that you like to do. There's there's a rule against drinking too much. There's a rule against uh, uh, having uh, sex with whoever you want to have sex with. And there's rules against this and rules against that. And when you add them all up, it just means that you're no longer free. You don't get to do whatever you want to do. Come on, really? That's silly. I mean, does anybody ever just get to do whatever they want to do? Life doesn't work that way. We live in a civilized society, and one of the hallmarks of a civilized society is that there are rules. There are certain things you can't do. You know, you there, there are streets out here in front of my house, that, and you can't drive 75 miles an hour down that street. Why not? Because the posted speed limit is 30 miles an hour and driving 75 miles an hour down a, a residential street is, is dangerous and you can't do that. There's a rule against that, right? You can't just walk into a store and pick up whatever you want and walk out with it. That's called stealing. There's a rule against that. You can't walk up to somebody in the parking lot or on the street or in a store or whatever and just punch them in the face. That's called assault. You can't do that. There's a rule against that. You, you can't just get into anybody's car and drive off with it. That's called auto theft. And there's a rule against that. The neighbor's dog barks at night. You can't poison it to shut it up. Why not? Well, there's a rule against that. You can't kill your neighbor's dog because you don't like it or because you don't like your neighbor, right? There's a... There are all kinds of rules. Everything in life has rules associated with it. When I was a college professor, when I walked into my classroom, my classroom, I made the rules. But you know what? The university also made some rules that I had to follow. I couldn't just do whatever I wanted. There were rules I had to follow. Nobody gets to live life without rules. I mean, think about when you were a kid at home growing up. Didn't you have rules? Didn't your parents have some rules for you? Don't bite your brother. Don't spit on your sister. Don't poke the dog in the eye. Don't pull the dog's tail, right? Don't spit on the floor. Don't throw your food across the table. Don't sneak in 
the, the, the bedroom and get dad's wallet and take money out of dad's wallet. Don't call your mom a stupid old woman. There were rules, right? No cutting classes. You go to school. When you're supposed to go, you stay there the whole time you're supposed to be there, and then you come home, right? There are rules. There are rules. Life exists within a framework of what we call social norms, things that you're supposed to do and things that you're not supposed to do. Well, just like the rest of life, Christianity has some norms, some things you're supposed to do as a Christian and some things you're not supposed to do as a Christian. That's, that's not oppressive. If it's not oppressive in society, and it's not, and if it wasn't oppressive in your home, and it wasn't, and if it won't be oppressive in your home when you have children and make rules for them, then it's not oppressive in Christianity. Christianity isn't oppressive just because it has rules. Nothing is oppressive just because it has rules. Okay, now, oppression does exist. It's a real thing, and, and some things are oppressive by nature, but it isn't just because they have rules. And just Christianity having rules doesn't make it oppressive, right? Someone says, well, but some of the rules in Christianity make it discriminatory. Christians discriminate against certain classes of people. Uh, no, I, I don't think they do. Christians following the Bible say, well, the, the Bible says that certain behaviors are wrong and sinful, and so people shouldn't engage in those behaviors. But saying that isn't discriminatory. That's not discriminating against anyone. Someone says, well, okay, but what about that guy, that, that baker up in Colorado? Uh, a, a gay couple wanted him to make a cake for their wedding, and he said he wouldn't do it. He was discriminating against them. Well, you know what? The Supreme Court said he wasn't. He, he wasn't discriminating against them. He was exercising his religious freedom. He was saying, I cannot participate in something that I think is is morally problematic. I just, I can't do it. If I did it, it would be like me stay, uh, placing my stamp of approval on that behavior. And I, I can't do that. God says that behavior is not good. So I can't say it is good by participating in it. I can't, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I can't make your cake. Now, that's not discriminating against them. Someone says, yes, it is, because he'll bake somebody else's cake, but he won't bake their cake. That's discrimination. Yeah, no, no, it isn't. The Supreme Court says it's not, because he was exercising his First Amendment religious rights to uh, freely exercise his religious beliefs. And so that, that wasn't discrimination. He was just saying, I'm sorry, I, I can't make your cake for you. There were lots of other places where they could go and get their cake made. Uh, he wasn't the only baker in town. Lots of places they could have gone, and there were other bakers that would have been happy to make their cake, no problem. But this guy was simply saying, I cannot participate in this because it would be like me approving of it, and I, I don't approve of it. I'm sorry, but I can't do it. See, that's not that's not discrimination. That's just not discrimination, and that's why the Supreme Court ruled that that he wasn't discriminating. So that that whole argument really doesn't fly, does it? Doesn't doesn't work very well. Rules are not ugly. Rules are not bad. Rules are not necessarily discriminatory. Now, some rules uh, could be. Okay, but, but just because there's a rule doesn't mean it's bad, doesn't mean it takes away your free will, doesn't mean that it's discriminatory. I mean, think about rules, right? Like outside my house, the speed limit, 30 miles an hour. Now, if you want to drive 50 or 70 or 75, you can. You have free will. You can drive that fast. Now, if there's a cop around, and sooner or later there will be, then you may get caught and, and there may be consequences, but 
you know, you have free will. Just because there's a rule against something doesn't mean you don't have free will. You have free will. The issue is whether or not you're going to submit and obey the rules. But if you do, that itself is an act of free will, isn't it? So the whole free will thing doesn't work. That's not a, that's not a good argument. Rules are for our benefit. Why do our parents make rules? Don't poke the dog in the eye. Don't pull a dog's tail. Don't bite your sister. Don't spit on the floor. Well, because there are things we have to learn. We have to learn how to behave properly. Okay, so that when we grow up, we can, you, you know, have friends, <laughs> get a job, get married, have a family, whatever. If we don't have some training, uh, nobody will want to be around us. If we don't know how to how to live properly, anybody who can just go do whatever they want uh, isn't isn't going to get very far in life and and have very many friends, because you end up annoying virtually everybody you're around if you don't know how to behave. Rules are also provide safety, you know. Don't stick the fork in the electrical outlet, Timmy. I told you. Give me that fork. You can't stick a fork in the electrical outlet. Well, why can't Timmy stick a fork in the electrical outlet? Well, because he'd get electrocuted. He'd die. Okay? Rules are good things. You have to have rules to know how to live, to live well with other people. Rules protect other people. Rules protect you. Okay, rules are, are not bad. One of the things that adds to this problem is that back in the 1970s, the mid-1970s, there was something, a philosophy that uh, came to American society called postmodernism. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail right now about what it is. Maybe I'll, I'll make another video on postmodernism at some point and, and talk about it specifically. But even though it hasn't been around for about 40 years, it, the, the fallout of postmodernism is still here. Postmodernism uh, advocated that there was no objective reality, no objective truth, and no moral absolutes, and uh, pretty much everything was absolutely relative, that everything was subjective, and you just made it up as you go, and, and you know there isn't any real right and wrong, and you just make things up as you go. Well, as a philosophy, that didn't last very long because it's just really dumb, okay? And people figured out it's, it's really a dumb philosophy. But somewhere in there, the, the, the roots dug in and, and they, they, you know, got buried down there in the, the soil of our society pretty deep. And over the years, even though people didn't, actually advocate postmodernism, they liked the idea that there's no objective truth. It's, you know, whatever you believe is truth for you is truth. Whatever I believe is truth for me is truth. Whatever she believes, whatever he believes, every, everything's just a matter of opinion because there is no actual truth. There's my truth and your truth, his truth and her truth, but there is no the truth anywhere. And so everything is just relative. Everything is just an opinion. And so if everything is an opinion, then I can't be wrong because that's my opinion. And my opinion is as good as your opinion. Well, that's nonsense. Okay. If, if something truly is a matter of opinion, then it's a matter of opinion. I like pepperoni pizza. My wife likes mushroom pizza. It's a matter of taste, a matter of opinion. I can't say mushroom pizza is bad. I can just say, yeah, I don't care for mushroom pizza as much as I care for pepperoni pizza. You see, some things are matters of opinion, but everything isn't. And even when you're talking about matters of opinion, you have informed opinions. In other words, people who know something about this. And then you have uninformed opinions, people who don't know the first thing about anything in relation to that. And they just have an opinion, but they don't know anything about it. So their opinion is worthless. Right? But, but everything isn't a matter of opinion. There is objective truth. Two and two is four. Every time, all the time. It's never three, it's never five, it's four. All the time. The earth 
rotates on its axis in an elliptical orbit around the sun, right? And that gives us the appearance every day of a sunrise and a sunset. That's an objective reality, all right? It does it. Now, people say, well, yeah, but people are at, influenced and impacted differently by the sunset. Everybody isn't think of the sunset the same way. No, that's true. They don't. But that doesn't change the fact that there's going to be a sunset. And, and you know, a few hours later, there's going to be another sunrise. And then a few hours later, there's going to be another sunset, right? Those, those are objective realities. Gravity functions. Gravity works all the time. And, and if there's a plane flying it, because its engines are working and it's defying gravity, that's fine. Till its engine stops working, then what's going to happen? It's going to fall to the ground. Gravity will kick in. Uh, you know, well, it's all, always kicked in. It's always working. But, but the engines aren't, aren't overcoming the effect of gravity anymore. And so that plane will fall to the ground. A bunch of people probably die. Um, there is an objective reality. There is objective truth. There are moral absolutes. Rape, for instance, is always wrong. Always. It is never right, no matter what the circumstances, never right for one person to rape another person. That's always wrong. It's always bad. Therefore, that is a moral absolute. Molesting a child. There's never a time when that's the right thing to do. So that's a moral absolute. It's always wrong. Murder. Now, I didn't say killing. I said murder is always wrong. There's never a time when murdering someone is the right thing to do. It is always wrong. Moral absolutes exist. To say they don't is just foolish. You can go the other way with it, too. Kindness is always right. There's never a situation where being kind is the wrong thing to do. Being kind is never wrong. Being kind to someone is always the right thing to do. So that's Therefore, it's a moral absolute. You see, this, this whole concept of rules and what's right and what's true and, and, and the objectivity of reality. Uh, when postmodernism came along and said, nah, none of that stuff's true. There's, it's all relative, so just make up you know, your, your mind about things and whatever you believe is right is right and good, do whatever you want. I'm sorry, but that just, that just isn't true and it doesn't work that way. And, you know, th there are rules in life, and the rules are designed to protect us, to benefit us in some way. And this is true for Christianity as well. There are rules, sure, sure, there are rules. Doesn't take away your free will. The rules don't discriminate against people. The rules are there for our benefit. Truth is never oppressive. Now, some people don't like the truth, you know, Truth about me is that I'm getting old. I don't have as much hair as I used to have. I don't hear very good. I wear hearing aids. You see, I got hearing aids back here. Uh, hearing aids. I don't hear very good. Got to wear glasses because I don't see very good. I got arthritis. My knees and my hips. Makes, I can't walk like I used to. I can't run like I used to. I mean, I can walk, but not very far like I used to be able to. Can't run anymore. You know, I don't, I don't like getting old. But the fact is, I'm getting old. The truth is I'm getting old. And so even if I don't like it, it doesn't matter. It's the truth, right? It's the truth. Sometimes we don't like the truth. It doesn't change the truth. But it doesn't make the truth oppressive. Truth is not oppressive. Truth is truth. Truth is factual. Isn't it? It's not oppressive. And it's not necessarily, necessarily liberating either. It's neither one. Truth is just truth. But it's good to know the truth. It's good to have the truth. And Christianity is true. One of the things Jesus was asked was about truth. And he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You want a relationship with God? have to go through Jesus to get there. He's the one that provides the relationship. He's the one that makes it possible. 
That's not oppressive. It's an avenue to God. So next time somebody says Christianity is oppressive, just remember they're wrong. It's not oppressive. Christianity is, is the most liberating, most wonderful thing in the world because it saves your soul and puts you in a relationship with God. And there isn't anything that's better than that. I hope this has been helpful. I'll leave you with the same thoughts I always do. Read your Bible, pray, go to church, and may God bless.